The Teach Yourself series from Via Graphics, designed to teach you to use your computer the fast and easy way. I'm Virgil Ritchie, along with Leslie Thomas. Whether we are designing a presentation for an audience of hundreds or just two or three people gathered around a laptop, PowerPoint creates the most effective, interesting, and easy to understand on-screen presentations. And the program doesn't stop at our computer. With PowerPoint, we can specifically design our presentations for a 35-millimeter slideshow, paper printouts, or even overhead transparencies. There's no question that PowerPoint includes all the tools we need, such as text, charts, clip art, music, animation, and more, enabling us to create the perfect presentation. From the Windows 95 desktop, we click the Start Menu button in the taskbar, choose Programs, and then open the Windows Explorer from the Flyout menu. Then we'll insert the Via Graphics Learning Disk into the proper drive. On our computer, this is Drive A. In the Explorer box, we double-click the A drive icon, and with the 3.5-inch floppy drive highlighted, we grab the Via Graphics Learning Files folder by holding the left mouse button. Then we drag the Learning folder to the C drive icon and release the mouse button. A window appears showing that the folder is being copied. Now we notice that the Via Graphics learning files appear on the computer C drive. Let's click the close button to return to the Windows 95 desktop. For the purposes of this video, you should already have PowerPoint, a standard feature of Microsoft Office 95, installed on your computer's hard drive. If you need assistance, please refer back to the operating manual. Now let's begin learning PowerPoint. To open the PowerPoint program, we click on the Start button from the Windows 95 taskbar. We then open the program's flyout menu and select the Microsoft PowerPoint icon. The PowerPoint splash screen will appear, followed by the What's New in Microsoft PowerPoint 95 dialog box. Since this is the first time that we have used the PowerPoint program, the What's New dialog box appears, listing the new additions and enhanced features which have been added to this latest version of the program. If you are familiar with an earlier version of PowerPoint, you'll notice that there are several new features which have been added, such as the answer wizard, the black and white view, the multiple undo, and the new multimedia capabilities. To learn more about the new meeting support feature, let's place the mouse pointer on the double arrow button and click once. The PowerPoint Works in All Situations dialog box will immediately appear. In this dialog box, we can use the mouse pointer to call up additional information about any of the topics. When we click on the presentation conferencing label, a pop-up window will appear, which explains the process in detail. When we are finished, we'll close the pop-up window by clicking anywhere on the screen and then we'll click on the back button in the bottom right of the screen to return to the What's New in Microsoft PowerPoint dialog box. In the top right of the What's New dialog box are the standard Windows 95 icons for Minimize, Maximize, Restore, and Close. To move on to the next window, we'll select the Close box, which is marked with an X. In the PowerPoint dialog box, we are given four options for how we want to use the PowerPoint program. The first option, the Auto Content Wizard, will take us step-by-step -step through the presentation building process. As the Tip for New Users indicates, the Auto Content Wizard is the quickest and easiest way to create a presentation. Meanwhile, with the Template option, we can create a presentation using a pre-existing format or we can simply choose to work with the blank presentation. However, we'll select the last option, open an existing presentation, and then we'll click on the OK button. 
In the File Open dialog box, we can select the drive path and folder where our file is located. The Look In box at the top of the screen contains the folder name which is currently opened. If we know the name of the file, we can type it directly into the File Name box at the bottom of the screen. To open a sample file from the learning disk directly, we'll double click on the My Computer icon, then the C drive icon, and then the Via Graphics Learning Files folder. And finally, we'll highlight the sailing file and then click on the Open button. You may pause the tape now to practice on your computer. To get a better idea of the kinds of presentations that PowerPoint is capable of creating, let's run the sailing slideshow. The first slide of the sailing file is displayed in the presentation window. To run the slideshow, we'll click on the slideshow button, which is located at the bottom of the presentation window. It is the first button from the right beside the scroll bar arrow. Slide 1, the Exuma Guide. South, southeast, as fly the crow, to Exuma we will go. Slide 2. Sailor down, sailor down, sailor down to Georgetown. Slide 3. Highborn K is the first we see, Yellow Bank is by the lee. Harvey's K is in the moon, Farmer's K is coming soon. Slide 4. Now we came to Gallio, out into the ocean we must go. Slide 5. Children's Bay is passing fast, Stocking Island come at last. Nassau Gal is all behind, Georgetown Gal is on my mind. Slide 6. A wiggle and a jiggle and a jamboree, Great Exuma is the place for me. Slide 7. The End. A black slide is used to mark the end of the slideshow and we are returned to the PowerPoint window. In the top left of the PowerPoint window is the program icon, which is common to most Windows 95 applications. When we click once with the mouse pointer, a menu appears. From this menu, we can perform the usual Windows commands that will affect the PowerPoint program, such as Restore, Move, Size, Minimize, Maximize, and Close. Notice that the shortcut keystroke command for Close is Alt F4. This brings up an important point, shortcut keystroke combinations. As you learn to use the PowerPoint program, you'll discover several keystroke combinations such as Alt plus F4 for close. Although PowerPoint is a Windows program, learning to use the keystroke combinations can save valuable time because you will no longer need to remove your hands from the keyboard in order to select a function with the mouse. Look for the quick key combinations as we use the program. We'll press the Escape key to clear this menu from the screen. Just below the PowerPoint icon is the presentation icon. Clicking on the presentation icon will bring up a similar menu with a few differences. The most important difference is that this menu will control only the current file on the screen, not the entire PowerPoint program. Also notice that the keystroke combination for close has changed from Alt F4 for the PowerPoint program to Control F4 for the presentation window. And the next command has been added. If more than one file were open, clicking on the next command would take us to the second file. Pressing Escape or clicking on the screen will close this menu. The blue area at the top of the screen is the title bar. It currently reads Microsoft PowerPoint Sailing. This is the name of the program followed by the title of the file we are now working on. Next, the gray bar located below the title bar is the menu bar. The menus contained in this bar are just one way to control the PowerPoint program. The menu bar contains headings for the pull-down menu items. These pull-down menus offer additional commands and information beyond the command buttons which are used in the PowerPoint program. Let's take a closer look at the file menu for an example of how these pull-down menus operate. The different options in the file menu are used to open, save, print, and exit the presentation. With the file menu already highlighted, we click the mouse once. A pull-down menu will immediately appear below the file heading. Notice that as we move the mouse pointer down the list, 
the options become highlighted with a blue background and a white text instead of the usual color black. In addition, at the bottom of the window in the status bar is a description of what each command will do. For example, when the slide setup command is highlighted, the status bar reads, changes the size and orientation of slides in the active presentation. To execute a command, we simply point to the desired option with the mouse pointer and click. Let's select the new command in order to create a new presentation. The new presentation dialog box appears and we can choose a new layout design. In the general tab, we can choose a blank presentation. While in the presentation designs tab, we can choose from a list of templates. Notice that when we select a template with the mouse pointer, a preview appears in the box on the right. Finally, in the presentations tab is a list of presentation templates that have already been created. Many of these have been designed to transmit a certain message, such as a financial report or a business plan. Also, notice that we have the option of accessing the auto wizard. Let's select the creativity session and then click on the OK button. The new slide will appear in the presentation window. To open a menu with the keyboard instead of the mouse, we can hold down the Alt key and press the underlined letter of the menu we want. In this case, we'll press Alt F for the file menu. We'll use the arrow keys on the keyboard to change the highlighted menu item to close, and then we'll press Enter to execute the already highlighted command. The new presentation will now be closed. Next, let's call up the file menu again. This time, use the method that is most agreeable to you, either the mouse or the keyboard. Another way to select a menu item is by pressing the underlined letter of the command we wish to perform. For instance, by pressing the letter N, we can create a new schedule again. However, let's click on the Cancel button to return to the presentation window. There are three general types of commands in the pull-down menus. Commands like close, save, and exit will perform a particular task as soon as they are selected. We can identify these command types by looking at the menu. Other command types such as new, open, and print will pull up an additional pop-out menu or dialog box when they are selected. These two can be easily identified by looking at the menu. Commands which are followed by three dots will display a dialog box when they are executed. Examples of these commands in the file menu include New, Open, Save As, Slide Setup, Print, and Send. We have already used the New command, so this time let's select the Print option. The Print dialog box will appear on screen. However, we won't use this box now, but we will learn more about printing in Chapter 5. To clear the window, we click the Cancel button with the mouse. Now let's call up the View menu. This time we will concentrate on the Master Command, which has a triangular arrow next to it. When we select the Master Command with the mouse, an additional flyout menu appears. All flyout menus operate exactly like the other menus. Since we don't want to use this feature now, we will close the flyout menu by pressing Escape. By using the arrow keys, we can highlight the other menu headings in the menu bar and we can see the basic information and features in the other pull-down menus under each heading. Let's close the menu by pressing Escape. It's a good idea to familiarize yourself with the power and features of the PowerPoint program by taking the time to move through and investigate each of the different options available in the menu bar. You may pause the tape now to practice on your computer. Besides the pull-down menus, PowerPoint provides a toolbar and status bar for easy use. The toolbar is located just below the menu bar on the PowerPoint window. Each button in the toolbar contains a picture, which indicates its function. When we move the mouse pointer to the Open button, which has a yellow folder with an arrow pointing at Open, additional information will appear on the screen. In a box just below the Open button is a quick tip. Quick tips give us a brief description of a toolbar button's function. Similarly, the status bar at the bottom of the screen also gives a description, much like it did for the commands in the menu bar and pull-down menus, 
but with slightly more detail. The status bar now reads, opens an existing presentation. Notice that when we select the next button with the picture of a computer disk, the word save appears in the quick tip box and the status bar information changes to read, saves the active presentation. In order to activate a toolbar command such as save, we simply click the button with the mouse pointer. The save is performed automatically. Just below the toolbar is a line of functions called the power bar. The power bar contains the most often used text formatting features such as font, size, and text color. To see a description and quick tip of a power bar function, we can select it with the mouse. For instance, when we place the mouse pointer on the far left button, font face will appear below in the yellow box. Likewise, the status bar now reads, changes the font of the selection, or sets default font. To execute a command in the power bar, we do exactly the same as we did in the toolbar. When we click on the font button, a list of alternative fonts appears. Let's press the escape key to close the box. At the bottom of the screen, just above the Windows 95 taskbar, is the status bar. We noted earlier in the chapter that this bar can be used to view a brief description of a command's function. Still, it has another equally important purpose. The left side contains information on the slideshow being displayed in the presentation window, including the current slide number on the screen and the overall total number of the slides. Then, in the next section is the name of the background which we are using. In this case, it is tropical. You may pause the tape now to practice on your computer. Chapter 1 covers a lot of information, so let's take a moment to review what we have learned. We learned how to log on to the PowerPoint program and open a new presentation file from the File Open dialog box. At the top of the PowerPoint window, we learned about the PowerPoint program icon, the title bar, and the Windows 95 boxes. Then we learned about the menu bar by opening the pull-down menu from the file heading and creating a new presentation file. We also learned about the different types of commands used in the menu bar, such as the flyout menu and the dialog box. Finally, we learned how to use the toolbar, the power bar, and we learned more about the status bar. In the center of the screen is the presentation window, which currently contains the first slide of our presentation. On the left side of the presentation window is the drawing toolbar. Notice that as we place the mouse pointer on top of the buttons, a quick tip appears, just as it did for the other toolbars. By default, all of the PowerPoint toolbars are docked or stationary. However, if we wish, we can move them to a new position on the presentation window. With the mouse pointer in the empty gray area of the drawing toolbar, let's press and hold down the mouse button and then drag out into the presentation window. When the outline changes into a square, we'll position it in the top left corner of the presentation window and then release the mouse button. This new position is permanent and the drawing toolbar will remain here until it is repositioned. Now we'll place it on the left side of the presentation window. In the lower left corner of the presentation window are the view buttons. Currently, we are in the slide view. Notice that the slide view button is highlighted with a lighter shade of gray. To see the presentation in a different view, we simply click on another button. When we select the outline view button, the presentation window is automatically changed to an outline format of our slideshow presentation's text. Since we're displaying the first slide in the slide view, the text of the first slide is now highlighted in the outline view. Also, notice that the outlining toolbar now appears on the left side of the presentation window. From the outline view, we can display the slide view of another slide by double-clicking on the preceding number with the mouse pointer. Slide 2 will appear in the presentation window, and the slide view button is again highlighted. 
The next button is the slide sorter view, which is used to view all of the slides at once. At first, the text outline of each individual slide appears, but then the text is changed to the slide view. The next button is the notes page view. This selection is used to create a handout or presentation notes, which show a picture of the slide at the top and contain a section for additional text at the bottom. Finally, the slideshow button, which we used earlier, displays the entire presentation. As we noted at the beginning of the video, there are several ways to create a new presentation. In this section, we'll use the Auto Content Wizard to create a sample presentation about our company's new product. We'll open the File menu and then select New. Notice that the shortcut keystroke combination is Control-In. In the New Presentation dialog box, we'll select the Auto Content Wizard. When the option is selected, we click on the OK button. In the Auto Content Wizard dialog box is a greeting and a brief description of what the Auto Content Wizard will do. For instance, the Auto Content Wizard is the quickest way to make a presentation. It gets us started by providing ideas and organization. Then we can use the PowerPoint tools to make the presentation our own. To move to the next dialog box, we click on the Next button. In the second dialog box, we can enter the information which we want to appear on the title screen of our presentation. Because our name was entered when we first installed the PowerPoint program, it has already been placed in the name box. In the next box, we are asked to enter the subject that we will be presenting. Let's type via graphics. Then we'll press the tab key to move to the next line where we can enter any additional information which we want to appear on the title screen. Using the delete key, we'll erase the current entry and then type, training makes a difference. Again, to move to the next dialog box, we click on the next button. Now we can select the type of presentation that we want to give. Notice that as we change the selection, a presentation summary is given on the right side of the screen. Since we are presenting a new product, we'll select the Selling a Product, Service, or Idea option, and then click on the Next button. In this dialog box, we can specify the visual style and length of the presentation. In the Visual Style box, we'll keep the already highlighted default setting. And then we'll select the length of our presentation as 30 minutes or less. The next dialog box is used to select the type of output that we will use and whether or not we want to print handouts with the presentation. The PowerPoint program provides several options for displaying our presentation. We can choose to create a black and white overhead transparency, a color overhead transparency, an on-screen presentation, or a 35 millimeter slideshow. We'll keep the already highlighted option to create an on-screen presentation. Then we'll also keep the No option highlighted in the Print Handouts box. In the last Auto Content Wizard dialog box, we click on the Finish button to create the new presentation. Slide 1 will appear in the presentation's window, along with the information that we entered. You may pause the tape now. The best way to work with the text of our presentation is in the Outline View. With the mouse pointer, we'll click on the Outline View button. Notice that the information we entered in the Auto Content Wizard appears in Slide 1. In Slide 2, however, the word Objective appears, along with a brief description of the type of information that the Auto Content Wizard suggests for that slide. Using the mouse pointer, let's place the insertion point to the right of the word Objective and then we'll erase it by pressing the backspace key. The page icons and diamond bullets which appear in the outline are used to mark the beginning of a new paragraph. Therefore, we need to be careful when we are working to make sure that we don't delete them. 
but if we accidentally remove an icon or bullet, it can be restored by clicking on the Undo button from the toolbar. When we click the Undo button, the last action that was taken is reversed. And each additional click will reverse another action. Now we'll type our objective, CD-ROM Multimedia Training. To move our cursor to the next line, we'll press the down arrow button. Again, we'll clear the text using the backspace key and then type in our desired objective with a little more detail. As the leader in computer training, Via Graphics is excited to introduce our new line of interactive CD-ROM training courses. As we enter the information, keep in mind that the default setting for the font size is 32. It's a good idea not to use too many lines of text in a single slide. The PowerPoint program is designed to automatically adjust the font size to fit the text into the presentation. And this adjustment may make it impossible for people at the back of the audience to read the text. Using the backspace key, let's erase the second line in slide 2 and then move the insertion point to slide 3. In the Customer Requirements line, we'll type, What kind of computer do you need? Below that, we'll type, A multimedia-equipped PC is all that's needed. And then, in the next line, we'll type, more specifically, followed by a colon. If we want to add an additional bullet, we simply press the Enter key and another bullet will appear. Next, let's demote the third line by clicking on the right arrow button from the Outline toolbar. The Demote and Promote buttons are used to change the level of the selected line. Now we can finish entering our information. We'll type, PC compatible computer. Then we'll press enter and type CD ROM drive. We'll press enter again and type sound card. And finally, we'll type Windows based operating system. The rest of the information can be added to the outline in the same way. However, in the interest of time, we have completed the rest of the outline off screen. If you are following along on your computer, just open the presentation file CD-ROM Training from the Via Graphics Learning Files folder. The CD-ROM Training file is identical to the file that we will be working with in the next section. Now that we have finished entering the outline text, Let's grab the vertical scroll box with the mouse pointer and move it to the top of the scroll bar so that we can view the first slide. Although this presentation is not that large, there may be times when we are working with several pages of information. This can make it difficult to view the entire outline structure. In the outline toolbar is the Show Titles button. When this option is selected, the outline is reduced to show only the titles of each slide. To expand the outline, we click on the Show All button. You may pause the tape now. To display the title slide in Slide View, we'll select the Slide View button at the bottom of the presentation window the slide view will immediately appear. If we want to move to another slide, we can click on the next or previous slide buttons at the bottom of the vertical scroll bar. When we click on the double up arrow button, we are moved back through the previous slides. 
Using the previous slide button, we'll advance to the fifth slide. Notice that the information we entered in the outline doesn't fit very well with the screen. However, there's no need to worry because with PowerPoint, changing the size is easy. With the mouse pointer, let's click on the cost information, which will appear in white text. When we click anywhere in the text, the outline box appears. Inside the outline box, we can make changes to the text or adjust the size of the outline border. We'll click on the shaded border of the outline box to bring up the resizing handles. With these handles, we can increase or decrease the space that the text appears in. Let's place the mouse pointer over the center handle at the bottom. When the mouse pointer changes into a double-headed arrow, we'll drag the bottom line of the box up. Now we'll place the mouse pointer on the border, not the handle, and then drag the box to the lower part of the screen. Then to deselect the box, we simply click anywhere in the presentation window. Next, let's select the title area. The problem here is that the title we entered is too long for the selected area. To increase the area, let's click on the shaded border and then drag the center handle at the bottom down. When it is properly positioned, we'll release the mouse button. Finally, let's do the same for the graph area, which we'll learn more about in Chapter 3. Using the previous slide button, let's return to slide 1. To change the font size of our title, we'll select it and then highlight the text using the mouse pointer. Then, in the power bar, we can adjust the font size by clicking on the down arrow button in the font size box. We simply click on the size of font that we want. Let's choose 80. Then, to remove the outline box, we'll click in the presentation window. If we want our text to appear on each slide in the presentation, we can bring up the slide master. We'll place the mouse pointer on the slide view button, then press and hold the shift key. The quick tip will change to read Title Master, and then we'll click the mouse button. We can use the Slide Master view to change the character's format, such as bold, italics, point size, or font for the entire paragraph, title, or even subtitle. Next, let's display the slide number of each slide. To do so, we'll open the View menu and then select Header and Footer. In the header and footer dialog box, we can include the time and date, slide number, or add a footer to the presentation. In the slide tab, we'll click on the slide number box and then click on the apply to all button. Now let's return to the slide view and then run the slideshow. Remember to click the mouse button to advance to the next slide. We can see the things that we have added and when we are finished with the show, we are returned to the presentation window. You may pause the tape now. Let's take a moment to review what we have covered in Chapter 2. We learned how to create a sample presentation using the Auto Content Wizard. We also learned to use the Outline View to add text to our slides. We learned how to use the Undo command. We collapsed and expanded the outline. We operated the slide view and changed the slides using the scroll bars. We learned how to adjust the size and position of the text in our presentation. And finally, we learned how to use the master slide view to add the slide number. Pictures are a great tool for enhancing any presentation. 
and the PowerPoint program provides a variety of clip art images for us to choose from. First, we'll select the slide that we want to place the clip art into. Let's use the next slide button to move to slide two. To open the clip art gallery, we can either open the insert menu and then select the clip art command, or we can click on the insert clip art button. When we click on the toolbar button, the Microsoft Clip Art Gallery version 2.0 dialog box appears. And then at the Add New Pictures prompt, we'll click on the OK button and the PowerPoint program will update the clip art file. In the left hand column is a list of the different clip art categories which are available. With the mouse pointer, let's select the cartoons category. Then in the pictures column, We'll use the scroll bar to move down until we find the stress, frustration, and anger picture. Notice that when it's selected, the common description appears at the bottom of the dialog box along with the specific path where the image is located. We'll click on the insert button to place the image into the slide. Now let's increase the size of the clip art. We'll place the mouse pointer on one of the handles and then when we see the pointer change to a double-headed arrow, we'll drag the mouse. When the clip art is properly sized, we release the mouse button. Next, we'll move the clip art to a new location on the slide by dragging. And then we'll click anywhere in the presentation window to remove the handles. A graph or chart, as it is sometimes called, is a great tool for presenting information in an easy to understand format. With the PowerPoint graph program, we can create several different kinds of graphs or charts. To create a graph, we'll move to the fifth slide in the presentation. Let's place the mouse pointer on the vertical scroll bar box and then drag the box downward until the quick tip to the left reads slide five. To create the graph, we simply follow the instructions which appear on the screen. We place the mouse pointer in the center of the graph outline box and then double click. Notice that a new menu bar and toolbar appear at the top of the screen. In the center of the presentation window is the data sheet dialog box for our current presentation. We can use the data sheet just as we would a spreadsheet in any other program. The information that is inserted into the data sheet is used to create the graph. To edit the data sheet, we'll place the cell outline in the number one cell by pointing and clicking with the mouse pointer. Then we'll press the delete key and type normal. To move the cell outline to the number two cell, we'll press the down arrow key and then press delete again and type your. Now using the mouse pointer, we'll place the insertion point in cell A1 to insert the data information. Then we'll press delete and enter $49.95. We'll press the down arrow key to move to the next cell, A2, and then we'll press delete again and enter $25. To remove the extra columns, we place the mouse pointer on the column headings, select them by clicking the mouse button, and then press the delete key. Finally, we'll click on the close box to create the graph. You may pause the tape now. Now that we're finished with the data sheet, we'll adjust the graph on the slide. Let's place the mouse pointer on the outline box handles and drag the edges until the graph is in the proper position. The current bar chart format is just one way to view the data in the graph. When we want to change a graph's type or other elements such as legends, labels, fonts, and colors, we can use the auto format. We'll open the format menu from the menu bar and then select the auto format command. In the auto format dialog box, we can choose from one of 15 galleries, each containing several options for our graph. Notice that the format number eight is highlighted with black in the 3D column gallery. With the mouse pointer, let's select the regular column gallery. 
Then we'll choose format number two and click the OK button to return to the slide. Next, we'll enlarge the chart. We first place the mouse pointer just inside of the chart and click once. We see a box with handles on it inside of the graph outline box. Let's place the mouse pointer on the lower right hand corner and when we have a double headed arrow, we'll drag the mouse until it is properly sized and then release the mouse button. We can also move the legend as well. We'll click inside the legends border and place the mouse pointer on the shaded outline. Then we can drag the legend to the upper right hand corner of the outline box. When it is properly placed, we'll release the mouse button. Next, let's change the chart's background color and add a border. We'll place the mouse pointer just above the chart, but still inside the outline box and double click. The format chart area dialog box will appear. In the Patterns tab, we'll select the Automatic option to create a border for the graph. Then, in the Area section, we'll select a new color swatch for the background color. When finished, we choose OK to return to the previous screen. Finally, let's add a title to the chart. With the graph still selected, we'll open the Insert menu and then select the Titles command. In the Titles dialog box, we'll choose Chart Title and click on OK. A text outline box will appear at the top of the chart. To type the title, we place the mouse pointer inside the dialog box, click once to see the insertion point, and remove the word title by pressing the backspace key. Then, in all caps, we'll type the new title, COST. When we're finished, we point and click in the blank area inside the graph outline box. Then we press the escape key three times to deselect the graph and return to the presentation window. Whether the PowerPoint presentation is large or small, it's a good idea to save it frequently. To save the presentation, we select the Save button from the toolbar. At the File Save dialog box, we'll type the name of our file. We'll call it CD-ROM Training 2, and then press Enter. When we create a presentation, PowerPoint automatically saves the file name, the directory it's stored in, the template name we are using, and the number of slides. We can view all of this summary information at any time by using the File Summary Information command. Let's open the File menu, then select Properties to enter the summary information for our current file. With the insertion point blinking in the title box, we press the Delete key to remove the text. Then we'll type CD-ROM Training 2, press the Tab key to move to the next line, and type Sales Presentation. In the Author line, we'll type our name, and in the Keywords line, we'll type Fall 1995. Then in the Comments box, we can enter additional information pertaining to the presentation. When finished, we choose OK and the PowerPoint program saves the presentation. And the file name will appear on the PowerPoint title bar. You may pause the tape now. Let's review what we have covered in Chapter 3. We learned how to insert PowerPoint clip art from the clip art gallery into the slide. We sized and moved the clip art images. We created a chart and edited a data sheet. We learned how to use auto format to change our chart. We enlarged and moved the legend, changed the background color, and added a chart title. Finally, we saved the presentation and filled out the summary information box. Finally, in the next section, we will learn how to print our slides and then exit the PowerPoint program. To print the slideshow on paper or even transparencies, we'll open the File menu and choose the Print command. 
At the top of the print dialog box is the name of the default printer which is currently selected. If we have installed more than one driver and want to change to another printer, we can select the down arrow button in the name box. In the print range box, we can choose the section of the presentation that we wish to print. We'll keep this set on all. Then in the copies box, we can choose the number of copies that we want to print and select whether or not we want them collated. Next, let's click on the down arrow button in the print what box. By scrolling the list, we can select which part of the presentation we want to print, either the slides, notes pages, handouts, or outline. Also, keep in mind that if we are printing overhead transparencies, it's a good idea to make proof copies with a sheet of paper. We'll choose slides and then click on the OK button to print. Now that we have printed the slideshow and are finished creating the presentation, let's save our work by clicking on the Save button in the toolbar. Then we'll close the PowerPoint program by opening the File menu and choosing Exit. You may pause the tape now. We've covered a lot of information in this tutorial. If you feel the need to review, simply rewind the tape and watch that section again until you are comfortable with the material. We at VA Graphics would like to thank you for choosing our company for your computer training needs. Remember, if you plan to learn PowerPoint for Windows 95 or any other computer software, there's no better way than through video training with VA Graphics.